Welcome to LitCast, the podcast covering GCSE literature revision and notes for WJC. These podcasts are designed to be used as an additional revision tool. There's nothing new or groundbreaking here, just revision notes in an on-the-go friendly format. Using these alone won't guarantee you an A-star, but they can help you build your confidence to apply this knowledge to your exam questions and your classwork. With that being said, let's get started. Hello and welcome back. In this episode we're going to be talking about Curly, the character that is arguably the most disliked character on the ranch in Of Mice and Men. So on the face of it, Curly is in a very strong position on the ranch. He's a young, fit and healthy man, he is the boss's son and he is also the only character on the ranch who uh, has a wife um, that we are aware of and uh, that wife Obviously, he's just married her and she's very attractive, as we see. However, he is plagued by insecurity, and a large part of that is the fact that he gets no respect from anyone. In contrast to Slim, who doesn't do anything to perhaps garner respect, apart from being very good at his job, and uh, gains the respect and authority without trying to constantly assert it. So a couple of things that we really kind of find out about Curly from the moment that we meet him are, first of all, his height. We know that he's a little man. He wears high heeled boots that give him a little bit of extra height. Now, as well as demonstrating uh, or giving him that extra height and therefore that extra authority, these boots demonstrate that he's also not a labouring man. They're They're a symbol of his authority and the fact that he doesn't need to work in the same way as the other men do. Um, But as well as that, another interpretation that you could look at is the fact that this is an outward symbol and an outward demonstration of his insecurity. So he's trying to cover and compensate for the fact that he feels insecure about his height by wearing these boots. So even though they're meant to be there as a demonstration of his authority, they actually demonstrate his insecurity as well. Something else that we find out about Curly is that he is an amateur boxer and he's always ready to pick fights, especially with guys who are bigger than he is, which again demonstrates that insecurity. And that's why we see him uh, picking a fight with Lenny. And it's this uh, kind of pushing for fights and this comparison that he uh, is given to a terrier that demonstrates his masculinity and his link to the theme of masculinity. At the time, masculinity was often defined by this idea of physical strength and in a world where it was quite difficult for men to provide, then demonstrating that masculinity through physical power over others was a way of building that confidence back up and and reasserting your authority in a group and especially uh, in groups where people didn't know each other very well because people moved around a lot to assert that authority physically was a a quick and easy way to demonstrate that you're not to be messed with so clearly embodies that idea of uh, masculinity being demonstrated through physical prowess We hear that Curly was in the finals for the Golden Gloves, which is a boxing competition, and that again gives us a little bit of context before we meet him to give us an idea as to just how proficient he is when it comes to the boxing ring. Fighting is the one thing that he's good at, and bearing in mind that, you know, he feels slightly insecure about his masculinity because of his height and his size, he's quite eager to demonstrate his skills and show show off his skills as a boxer. His insecurity about his wife make uh, him aggressive as well as his size. So he's quite aggressive and he's quite jumpy. Again, that comparison to a terrier is quite important. He picks fights with the wrong men. Uh, So someone like Slim, because Slim actually has authority and is quite well respected. And Lenny, because Lenny's big and powerful and too strong. And he wants to try and prove something against those men, but actually he is selecting people who are either popular or physically uh, superior to him and therefore uh, reinforcing the idea that he has no real power on the ranch. He is ultimately an outsider because he's not one of the bunkhouse men but he craves that attention and respect and wants to be admired and respected. He just doesn't really know the right way to go about it. So Curly is just as lonely and isolated as the other characters because no one likes him, not even his wife. We are aware from fairly early on in the novella that Curly isn't happily married and 
Curly's wife married him as a way of getting away from her mother and her old life. She admits to Lenny that she doesn't like him, and the only time that they appear together in the novella is, is when she's dead. They're never seen together when they're alive. But he doesn't touch her even then. It's Slim who checks to see if she's really dead. There's no connection there, and there's no sense of affection in, in any capacity. The only thing that we get uh, there's kind of a hint between a uh, relationship between Curly and Curly's wife is the glove full of Vaseline uh, which again demonstrates Curly's opinions towards women and his idea of fulfilling the expectations of a marriage which is simply to have a glove full of Vaseline and to treat his wife as a sexual object. Ultimately, Curly is once again trying to prove his masculinity by marrying a physically attractive woman. She's never given a name but is instead called simply Curly's wife. So we see the possessive nature of Curly through the use of that lack of name. Curly refuses to let her talk to anyone on the ranch, which isolates her from everyone and sets the stage for trouble. And he makes a big show of keeping his hands soft to caress her, yet patronises the local whorehouse on a Saturday night, which he also attends despite being married. While he may strut around the ranch because of his position as the boss's son, he obviously cannot satisfy his wife and is mean to her. And he beats up any man who dares talk to her and show her affection or attention. The only one he listens to and seems to respect is Slim. Even after Curly's wife's death, the reaction that we see from Curly is that he then decides to go and kill Lenny instead of staying with his wife and mourning her death. He doesn't really care about her, he's just angry that Lenny's taken away something belonging to him. He simply sees his wife as an attractive possession that he can use to demonstrate his masculinity to the other people on the ranch. He doesn't understand what she actually needs from him, which is company and attention. It's Curly's desire for revenge, really, um, for taking away this possession of his wife, as well as humiliating Curly when uh, Lenny fought him and broke all the bones in his hand. It's, it's that desire for revenge and for vengeance that encourage him to push the other ranch workers to um, aim for Lenny's gut, uh, when he's talking about killing Lenny, he talks to Carlson and he says he wants to, to aim for Lenny's gut so Lenny will suffer. And this then in turn forces George's hand and forces him to make the decision to kill Lenny mercifully so that he won't suffer. So through his meanness he encourages that friendship to end in tragedy. So when talking about Curly in your essays and linking him to context, again, just a few things that you could use or maybe some extra points that you could add to your revision notes. So Curly reflects the fact that 1930s American ranches were harsh and violent places in a dog-eat-dog -dog world. That masculinity and that aggressive, violent, physically-led masculinity is an important character, uh, characteristic of his. He also emphasises the sexism of the time in the way that he treats his wife as a possession and a sexual object and nothing really more than that. He uh, is a good example of the casual racism of the time and the general prejudices of the time and he also emphasises the futility of dreams because it could be argued that his dreams were shattered as he failed to make it as a boxer. As well as that, his dream on the ranch and in the context of the ranch is to be respected and to be admired and accepted by the other men. Now, the fact that he is a failed boxer can again add to his humiliation and the fact that he's physically smaller than most of them again highlights his humiliation in his struggle for that authority. So that's just some notes and some contextual links uh, on the character of Curly for your revision. Uh, thank you for listening and tune into the next one. You've been listening to LitCast, the podcast covering GCSE literature revision and notes for WJEC. This podcast is available to download from castbox.com. So if you're listening on YouTube, the link will be in the description below where you can download these to listen offline on your phone and on the go. Thank you for listening and good luck with your revision.